you. Good afternoon. Um, I'm Dr. Lori Sivers. I'm a doctor of acupuncture and Chinese medicine. And today we're going to talk about a little bit. We'll go into global entrepreneurship. Let me know if I'm in your way. <laughs> Week. Um, I'm going to tell you about my personal journey because that, that's pretty much how I got into being an entrepreneur. And then I'm going to talk to you about some challenges and secrets in TCM. Do you guys know what TCM is? Probably not. Someone does. Yeah, good job. Traditional Chinese medicine. And then I'm going to give you a little advice, and then we'll do a question and answer. All right, so do you guys know what an entrepreneur is? Yeah. Someone who does businesses? Yeah, exactly. Someone who has businesses. Exactly. So a business owner or someone who starts their own business, taking on the risks and responsibility to turn an idea into a money-making venture. Um, so I understand that you guys are a group of medical students. Does everyone here want to go into some form of medicine? Is that correct? I see a lot of, yeah, head shaking. Yes, okay. Does everyone probably want to go into Western medicine? Is that, that would be my take, everything. Anyone Eastern? Hands up for Eastern? I didn't, ex I didn't expect any hands because I didn't even know until I graduated from college uh, what I wanted to do. Um, so just to give a little, uh, so you can kind of understand Western or Eastern medicine. Western medicine, as you know, is also called allopathic medicine. Its emphasis is on scientific research. The reason why it's called Western medicine is because it originated in Western Europe and then it migrated over to us. And basically they do pharmaceuticals and surgery. Their strength is really emergency medicine. Western medicine is great at that. And then how many are familiar? Has anyone here had acupuncture or done Chinese herbs or had any experience with Chinese medicine? No? Okay, great. <laughs> All right, so Chinese medicine or Eastern medicine is a natural medicine. It originated in East Asia, and we really are holistic um, based medicine. We look at one thing, whereas in Western medicine, right, if you have heart problem, you're going to go to a cardiologist. If you have, you know, you, know you, 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 you go to different doctors for different things. In our medicine, it's the opposite. You're seen as a whole, and we see each other um, collectively. And basically, it's a, we do herbs, diet, and acupuncture. That's my mo main modalities. Um, a little history about me. I graduated from the University of Missouri at Columbia and got my bachelor degree. I became, you'll hear in my story, um, why I got into Chinese medicine. Definitely not because of the school I went to or anything like that. It was by default. I didn't know that I wanted to be a business owner. And um, in 2003, I enrolled in PECOM, which is called Pacific College of Oriental Medicine. It's a school in San Diego. And I got my Master's of Science in Traditional Oriental Medicine and MSTOM. And then I started, after I graduated, I started now acupuncture. And my husband said, you have to shorten it. No one can spell acupuncture, which he was right. So I shortened it to now acu. And then I got my doctorate degree. So I'm a doctor of acupuncture and Chinese medicine. And I'm board certified and licensed in Florida and California. All right, so my story. I was a swimmer. I swam from age three to 23, uh, which is I started competing at age five. So I naturally was interested in diet and nutrition. Anything that would help me recover, would help me in sports, um, I was all for that. And so, so diet and nutrition have been just a part of my entire life. And then I started getting really bad acne, which is you know <laughs> something probably people can resonate with here. But in, my, in college, <laughs> Got to stay back. Uh, in college, I had, I had really bad acne, and as a swimmer, right, you can't really wear makeup because it's just going to wash off in the water. So I decided I would go to a dermatologist and get treated for the acne. And so the dermatologist prescribed me antibiotics um, for the acne, which worked. But after a few years of being on that, I started getting really bad sinus infections that were a result of the antibiotics. And so with the sinus infections, I saw another doctor. He gave me decongestants, which um, he told me were equivalent to taking eight cups of coffee a day. And sometimes I take two of those in a day. They're off the market now, so you don't have to worry about that one. But needless to say, I couldn't sleep, right? I, w I was wired all the time. And so with the, the, you know, so they gave me a sleeping pill, right? Instead of just taking me off decongestants, they decided to give me a sleeping pill. Well, that sleeping pill gave me migraines. And so I started to see the cycle that I was in, that it was just one medication. I went in for one problem, I came out with three more. And I, none of the doctors communicated with each other. They all were, you know, they all indicated that I was being on this, these medicines my whole life. And I didn't like that. So I had a push at my last year of 
college, uh, the athletic department was picking up my tab for all the doctor's visits and medications. And so soon they let me know, hey, you're graduating, you're gonna have to start picking up the tab. And it was a lot of money at the time. And so I was studying one night in the medical library and I saw an advertisement for an acupuncturist. And I was like, oh wow, <laughs> I've always wanted to try this. And so I made an appointment. And when I went in, um, the first thing we did was change my diet. Because diet it has a huge effect on your skin. And so we changed up my diet. I was able to get off of all my medications. I did some acupuncture and I just really, I, I, I was like, oh, I, find, I really like this. I want to learn more. And so I went and I enrolled in Pacific College of Oriental Medicine. And then when I was there my first semester, we were doing tongue and pulse diagnosis. Is anyone familiar with, have you heard of tongue and pulse diagnosis? Someone at the door. Anyone heard of that? No? So you can tell a lot about a person's health by looking at their tongue and reading the pulse. Now we'll get into pulse diagnosis a little bit later on. Well, my teacher that day, he was a really well-respected Chinese doctor, and he said, he pulled me aside at the end of class and he said, Lori, you have a very serious long-term disease. And he was serious, so I was concerned because at the time I wasn't really having any symptoms. I felt pretty good. So I decided to go, into, uh, go to my Western doctor and get a full physical, and everything came back fine. And I was good, and it was just kind of in the back of my mind. And then a year later, I started getting really scary symptoms. Um, the worst one was vertigo. Are you guys familiar with vertigo? Mm -hmm. Oh, good, good. So dizziness is like you're spinning, vertigo is the room is spinning, and it's really debilitating. So I started getting vertigo. I had uh, extreme fatigue, muscle weakness, numbness and tingling in my legs. I had vision problems. I had a whole host of symptoms, over 50 symptoms in the next few years of things. So I went from... Being, a, you know, being an athlete who could train four or five hours a day to barely being able to make it through the day. And so I write up, um, you know, I looked at all the diseases that had vertigo, and the one that matched the closest was multiple sclerosis, or MS. Have you guys heard that? Yeah, okay, lots of terms. Lots of heads shaking, yes. So um, I was looking at it, and what I saw is there's no cure for it, but it was, you still would live the same amount of, amount of time, but you would, the quality of life would be really diminished. A lot of these people end up in wheelchairs and with canes, and you know, it's just not a very good lifestyle. A lot of them can't work. And so I didn't like that. And so in school, I started researching everything I could about multiple sclerosis. All my reports were on it. If I ever found anyone who had it, I would, I would talk to them, ask them tons of questions. And so I just kept figuring it out. Because I, I was in school, and so, I got you know so so I got to try a lot of things a lot of things out a lot of different styles of acupuncture and Chinese medicine and herbs and so what I learned is that there's a lot of challenges in traditional Chinese medicine. You guys going into the Western field, you're going to find out there's a lot of challenges in your medicine as well um, that actually make ours kind of seem small. So one of the challenges that we have, well, before I go to the next slide, have you guys ever heard of the word qi? Q I? Yeah. What does it mean? Like a. Oh, I don't know the definition, but... That's fine, just... Okay, anyone? Yeah? Your energy? Yeah, very good, okay. So, qi, everyone thinks it means energy, but it's a mistranslation in our medicine, and that's what all of our textbooks are written, that qi is energy. So people think that an acupuncturist has these uh, meridians, which is another mistranslation, that we have these invisible energy channels with, that, that we're fixing, and it's just not true. It's a mistranslation. All the Chinese were talking about was they found the key to health was blood and oxygen flow. If you had blood and oxygen flow into an area, you had health. And so if you want to take a minute and imagine a rubber band on your finger, right? If you were to wrap that rubber band really tight, right? And keep it on there, eventually your finger is going to fall off, right? Yeah, eventually. And so all we do in Chinese medicine is really just remove that rubber band to allow blood and oxygen to flow properly, and then the body just heals itself. And that's the key to the medicine, and that's why I learned we're not an energy medicine at all. Just like Western, we're physiological medicine. So what I found is there's a lot of secrets in our medicine, a lot, because of where it comes from, from China. You've heard of the ancient Chinese secret? You guys heard that? Good, okay. <laughs> so secrets. Um, if we go back to the late 1940s, the ruler of China was a guy by the name of Mao Zedong. He decided that they were going to systematize traditional Chinese medicine, also you know TCM. And at the time, it was a barefoot medicine. Everyone was just doing their own thing. 
they were you know, practicing in villages and they were getting information handed down from generation to generation. And so we decided, hey, we're gonna put this together, we're gonna make textbooks, we're gonna have to teach it to you, kind of like how Western medicine, if you go in there, they're gonna have schools and classes and a curriculum. And so that's what they're trying to do. So he told, he got, he told them that they're gonna come and, and they're gonna, the, the people are gonna tell them their secrets and then they'll be honored for them for it, and, um, and, but, they, but they will tell their secrets. So a lot of them fled to Hong Kong and Taiwan, and Chinese medicine flourished there because they don't, they don't tell their secrets in Chinese medicine, and it's really tough to get it out. None of the books have it. And so what I've learned throughout the years is I've been picking up information, different secrets, some people that have come over here and they've lived in the United States from, you know, from a lot of them from Hong Kong or, or, or Taiwan, They'll give you little bits of information. And so um, with that, I've been able to pick up a style of acupuncture, which I'll go into in just a minute, uh, that works really well. But back to when I was in school, I got to try, you know, I was sick, right? I got to try different styles of acupuncture and see how it affected my body um, and see what works best for me. And so the style of acupuncture, but have, has anyone gotten acupuncture here? All right. <laughs> Any students, family members gotten it? Okay, so we have a long way to expand for this medicine, so let's go. <laughs> I guess that's good. So I practice a style of acupuncture called DNA, also known as distal needling acupuncture. I'm not aware of anyone else in Palm Beach County that does this style, but what's great about this, I'm just gonna open up all four of these, um, is that I only needle from the elbows down and knees down, because um, this secret that I learned is that you don't have to needle locally. So what that means for the person is that it's comfortable, right? You don't have to disrobe. If you're coming in with neck or back pain, you don't have to lie face down, because the needles sit in for 20 to 45 minutes, depending on what you're treating. And there's, it's, very, it's a lot more effective, and there's no inflammation. So if I can just give an example. So if someone were to come in and they had shoulder pain, I used to be able to um, needle them in the shoulder, right? That's, that's what we're taught in school, the local needling. And so what would happen is they you know, needle it in there, it gets inflamed, um, because the, you know we're getting a lot of blood and oxygen locally. They go home, it usually gets a little worse, and then they feel better. But with distal needling acupuncture, I'm gonna needle the opposite, they're most likely their opposite foot or ankle. And so I, a patient I just had come in, she, she had shoulder pain, and for internal rotation was only, you know, you're supposed to be able to go that far. But she could only go this far. So I put a couple needles in her ankle, and in a few seconds she was able to go the full range. And so that's just kind of, you know, it looks kind of like magic, but all it is is getting blood and oxygen flow into those areas. Am I making sense? Yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> all right, herbs. Since not a lot of hand raisers for acupuncture, um, anyone had any experience with herbs? Even just Western herbs? Okay, let's see some. <laughs> good. All right, so herbs, I found there's another secret, and it, it's all in the pulse diagnosis. Uh, Medical pulse diagnosis. So when I graduated from school, I didn't think herbs worked at all because I was sick, right? So I started seeing people who wrote books, people who translated books, people who are herbal masters. I went to a lot of them and I never got better on herbs. So I just graduated thinking they don't work until I found medical pulse diagnosis. Now we're all taught pulse diagnosis in school. And all it is is you read, there's areas on your wrist that correlate to different organs and you learn how to read it and you can tell how blood and oxygen is flowing through certain organs. But what this, this medical pulse diagnosis does is it matches the pulse to the herbs and there's a certain way that you, you make up the formulas and it works really, really well. Um, it's the first time that I made, you know, I went, from, I, I just made leaps and bounds in my health just because of my, I, I didn't have a lot of good blood and oxygen flow in my body and people were always giving me tonics and I needed blood movers. And so once I got the right herbs in my system, I started healing really fast. All right, so the number one cause of death in the United States is heart disease, okay? That's easy to look up and verify. So there was a Framingham Heart Study. So what I'm doing is I'm just going to compare heart disease, how it's treated Western medicine, and then how it's treated in Eastern. Um, so there was a study that came out, Framingham Heart Study. They said 60% of Americans over age 50 are walking around with heart disease. And that's, that's a big number of people, okay? <laughs> but what was great about that study is it was actually correlating to what we were finding coming into our clinics. Not just me, but other people who practice this pulse diagnosis all over the world. We we're finding that, pe that that was about accurate, that about 60% of the people coming in had heart disease. And so in Western medicine, um, it's usually a late detection, but your, your treatment is drugs, bypass surgery, and stents. 
and there isn't really a lot of early prevention involved with it. Yeah, you could say high blood pressure, but um, I don't know. It, a lot, unfortunately, with Western medicine, a lot of times the first sign is a heart attack, and 30% of those are fatal. So the, the big numbers. But there's a solution. Uh, Eastern medicine, we can, we can tell if you have heart disease by reading your pulse. Your left student will be blocked. Mine was blocked. Um, and you'll also have some signs and symptoms. We recognize you know, something like cold hands, fatigue, anxiety, and insomnia are all signs of heart disease. These are early signs and symptoms of heart disease. And this is the only medicine I know that recognizes these things as early heart disease that correlates. Because in Chinese medicine, all, all diseases, like emotional diseases, they, they say is in the organs. So like something like anxiety, that means you probably are not getting proper blood flow in the heart. And when you get proper blood flow there, the anxiety goes away. And our treatment is Chinese herbs. So for me, we cleaned out the artery, I cleaned out the arteries and veins and I felt better, no side effects. So all of a sudden, I had energy. The anxiety was gone, and I was sleeping like a baby. And it, you know, Chinese herbs were, were were a miracle for me. All right, so we're on to advice. Does anyone know what advice I'm going to give you? <laughs> no. <laughs> All right. So the first one is never give up. I can't imagine if I ever gave up. You know, if I would have just given up and just you know, gone the Western medicine way. I don't know where I would be. I can't speculate on that, but I'm very happy. I mean, I ran four miles this morning. I feel, I feel good. I have energy. I've, I'm healthy. <laughs> and second one is question everything. Now, you guys are going to be going probably to med school and stuff, so question what they tell you. Don't just take it because it's law. It was something that was brought in, I don't know, maybe in the 1950s of theories. Um, question it. Question everything you're told, especially if you're sick. Question everything. And then challenges are opportunities. Um, that was the biggest challenge in my life, overcoming uh, illness. Uh, you know, and I was an athlete, and it makes athlete, you know, all that training and stuff is nothing because there at least, you know, you're, you're only training five or six hours a day, but with chronic illness, you have a 24-7 all the time, every single second of the day. So it's, it's a really tough thing. Uh, to overcome. All right, so I told you a little bit about Global Entrepreneurship Week. I talked to you about my personal journey, and then I told you about some challenges and secrets in traditional Chinese medicine, and then I gave you advice. Um, there is a free ebook. I'll leave that screen up during the Q and A. Um, but does anyone have any questions? Yes. What kind of uh the herb, what kind of herbs used are easy to find in Florida? Oh, so the herbs I use, you have to have a license and it all, I import them from uh, China and Taiwan. Okay. So they're all in pinyin and Chinese and you really do need to know how to okay. prescribe them. Good question though. Yes? Uh, is acupuncture like, you just like keep going or is it like a one time thing? You keep going, yes. Uh, very good question. So it depends on what you're coming in for. Um, every once in a while you'll have a miracle treatment like that, but usually it takes, it's a little bit like physical therapy where you need to keep doing some uh, more and more treatments to get the results, depending on what you have. Yes, right next to him. What MS, uh, what MS uh, symptoms do you still experience or struggle for you? I don't really have any MS uh, symptoms anymore or struggles. Really? Yeah. Like no overheating or anything? Nothing. No. No. Nothing related to MS. <laughs> Yes. So you said that um, you put a needle in this lady's ankle who had um, shoulder pain. Yes. How, how exactly does that blood flow to the opposite? That's part? a good question. Yeah. So the theory, and it's more than one needle uh, for there, but the theory is, you know, when you're when you're an infant, right, your 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 whole nervous system comes out of the spine, and so they mirror each other. You've, you guys are probably familiar with reflexology. Right, how if you press on a point on the foot, it will do that. So what they, what the Chinese found is that you can you can mirror different areas, and what and it tells the brain to send blood and oxygen, and you can test it out immediately because you just if, if I forget a needle, the, the patient will tell me about it right away. It's it's pretty neat. <laughs> Good question. I, I had a question. Yeah. So as far as the entrepreneur side of things, yes. Do you have any mentors or anyone who has inspired you? Oh my gosh, I've had a ton of mentors, people that. These people probably wouldn't know, but I'm con I constantly I'm always have a coach. Always. Yeah, good question. But yeah, definitely mentors. And I, do you run your business alone? Do you have a team? Um, I have an assistant, and then, um, yeah, pretty much I do most of my stuff, yeah, with an assistant. Do you market? Yes. 
And how do you market your business? Because it um, sounds like you do great work, but how do you tell tell others to mainly to Facebook ads? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and that and networking and stuff. Yes. Did you ever have a financial struggle with it? Like at any point, you almost you know you struggle financially. You know, I've been very lucky with that because I have a husband who works as well. So anytime that we had problems, the other person was doing well in their business. So we've um, we've done well that way. So I've been very lucky. Good question, though. How was your research journey? My research journey. How was it? Yeah. So when I did my, you know, like, so our research, we had to go through PubMed and, and do those kind of things. Um, if for a good research place, uh, you're interested in research, I take it, check out a website called thennt.com. And NNT means number needed to treat. Uh, it, every drug is assigned it. And it's a website that doctors put up, pharmaceutical companies always try to take it down, but um, it just gives peer-reviewed studies, and so I prefer something that's more peer-reviewed because it's really tough right now to find what is true research and what really is, you know, so a lot of the research is really, in my opinion, um, far behind. Do you have, like, any advice for, like, entrepreneurs? Like, how do you market your stuff? Um, well, the best advice I would say is number one, do what you love because you're going to be working a lot of hours in it. So for me, sometimes I feel bad writing off a lot of stuff that I would normally buy. And so, but it, so, how would I give me your question once more? How did you uh, grow? Because I know like the first month you are hard. So how did you like? How did you help yourself like grow to where you are? How did I help myself grow? Um, constantly learning really, and just trying new things, really pivoting. Um, as an entrepreneur, you always are on a path and you're always gonna change and pivot and move and it's always gonna grow, it's never static, which is really different. Because I know you, a lot of you guys said that you were gonna be in Western medicine and a lot of Western medicine jobs are employee jobs. Uh, that's just how it's kind of, the trend has gone, where Eastern medicine, it's almost all entrepreneur, it's starting to get employees, but um, you know, do you wanna be an entrepreneur? Yeah, it, you'll, you'll just push through and you'll, it, it's like when you want something, the universe just brings it to you, I think. Yes? How does the post-diagnosis work? It's, a, it's, that's a good question, I'd have to do, but basically you're, you're feeling into each of the areas of the wrist and so you can feel, and anyone can learn it, you can learn it as well, um, you can feel how the blood is flowing because you're feeling the radial artery and it, it's how the blood ricochets on the bones and you just read, there's, there's a little bit of a black back, back flash that you get and so you, you read that pulse, it's just a wave pulse on it, yeah. Yes? Speaking about pivoting in business, how did your business pivot during COVID? <laughs> yeah, good question. Did you have to change? So during COVID, yes. So I guess I lucked out. So before COVID, you know, I had my business and I was in California and I was doing a lot of insurance, like all insurance, because that's how California is. And I was getting really, really burned out. And my husband's originally from Orlando and his dad had passed away and he wanted to move back to Florida. And so he's like, Lori, would you be open to moving? And I was like, no, I really don't want to. And you have to get licensed in Florida. And I just had this practice. And then a series of events happened. And it, it, and I started meditating on it every day. And I got the same message that no matter what, in three years, we'll be moving to Florida. So I was like, OK, I will close up shop as long as I can go and get my doctorate degree. So I got my doctorate degree, and then COVID hit. And once COVID hit, you know, I, wasn't, I didn't want to go out and start my business. So I started studying with um, a guy out in um, Washington State. And he's the one, he's the originator of the medical pulse diagnosis. And so I, I worked with him, I did internships with him, and I've been learning from him all these years of the stuff. And so it's just, it actually worked out really well for me, a, another pivot. Yeah. Great. Yes? Um, my dad has he had some vertigo, and he actually turned to um, like Eastern medicine. Yeah. And it was a while ago, but I remember they made him stick out his tongue to measure yeah. how his tongue moves. Do you, understand, do you know why that was? Yeah, I know why. So the tongue is the only muscle in your body that's not covered. And so you can tell a lot about what, what your muscles, muscular system looks like. So they're probably checking. I don't do tongue ball diagnosis as much, really, any, anymore because the pulse diagnosis does everything for me. Um, but yeah, so they're just checking to see, my guess would be liver wind. Would, and I know that's not going to really mean anything to you, but uh, were they prescribing them herbs or just doing acupuncture herbs? herbs. So they're, they're trying to just see probably what di diagnosing between different patterns. Yeah. Is he okay now? Yes. Okay. How did you grow your network? 
That's a good question. That's something that's you know you're always in something you're always going to be doing. So really, um, ed educating people, um, going out speaking, right? Speaking, doing uh, networking events, meeting other practitioners. So is acupuncture used for like just like physical like pains? Because like if you have a problem with your heart or like yes. Very good question. So I use acupuncture, for, this is me, it's not every acupuncturist, but for me personally, I only use acupuncture for pain, and then I use herbs for everything else. Yeah. But you're right, acupuncture, it would just be too expensive. Herbs is such a better way of addressing a lot of internal problems. Yeah. What other types of acupuncture is there? I know you're DNA, right? Yeah, DNA. So like other ones that I've done is sports medicine or orthopedic acupuncture. It works really well for athletes, but on um, people chronically ill, it can be kind of tough. And then um, I've done five element acupuncture. I've done the balance method acupuncture. And then there's, there's, there's like so many that, you know, traditional acupuncture, which I think works the least effective of all of them. The Japanese acupuncture is good too. There's a, the good news is a lot of the acupuncture styles really work. So that's, that's the positive thing. <laughs> You're gonna get a lot of extra credit today. That's great. <laughs> uh, there's a question from the online audience. Yeah. What kind of herbs do you recommend for someone with anxiety? I'd have to diagnose, I'd have to see what their pulse is, and they would all be in, again, in Chinese and Pinyin. It's not something you'd go out and buy, it would be something that they'd have to come see me. Yeah, yeah. the herbs you guys can't buy on your own, and if you can buy it on your own, it's gonna be a really poor quality. You wanna get it from a practitioner. Uh, my clinic, um, we, you know, they're concentrated five to one, they're really strong, and we do high dosages of herbs. Um, but, yeah. And then there's a couple more. So, what is your favorite success story other than your own? And where do you see your business going in the next five to ten years? Okay. Um, <laughs> I had a guy come in and he had heart problems and he went to Western Medicine and he, you know, they, they didn't find anything wrong with him at all. And he came in to see me and, you know, his heart pulse was blocked and he had a lot of symptoms and everything. But Western Medicine wasn't able to do anything. And so I've worked with him for a series of months and, I mean, he has absolutely no problems at all now. And so I love seeing that kind of stuff. I love seeing um, changes in blood work and, you know, a lot of stuff. And then what was the other question? Um, where do you see your business going in the next five to ten years? The next five to ten years, I'd like to... Um, I'd like to expand, and I, th I think that it's, so like with all the secrets, I'm the only one in Palm Beach County that does like what I talked about here. I think it would be great to see, I have, you know, train other people into this and, and you know, have a bigger, you know, because it does work so well. So I'd like to have more practitioners and more people doing, doing what I do. All right. So when it when you uh, prescribe someone the herbs, would they like take the herbs and make it into tea to yeah. consume it? Or? Yeah, very good. Yes. So we I I do granules if you're familiar like granules, and so I have depending on your body weight is how much herbs you take, and you mix it with hot water, and you make it into a tea. Yeah. If you take it in pill form, it just gets to be too many pills. Yeah. What kind of soft skills help you in your what business? Skills? Soft skills. What's a soft skill? Like bedside manner, things like that, things that oh, are not just... Customer service. So I did work at the Ritz-Carlton. Uh, I did massage there for a while, and so just the customer service training I had there helps a lot. Really just listening to people. People, you know, you have to like people. And, you know, people are really good to get to know, so just communication. Oh, there's a question. Yes. What other field were you interested in before acupuncture? That's a good question. I was interested in nutrition, um, but the problem was a lot of nutrition, nutritionists that I met, they were really overweight and didn't look healthy, and I didn't like the food pyramid. And so that was, you know, to me, that was a contradiction. Uh, so that I was interested in for a while. Now, I didn't really know, you know, if you guys don't know what you want to be, that's fine. It took me till I graduated from college, okay? So <laughs> you got time, and you can change and pivot, and you know, yes. Uh, how much does it cost? Like, uh, to go to school? Yes. Yeah. Uh, like, 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 for acupuncture and herbs. Like, for like, for like, acupuncture and herbs. So herbs, I do a dollar per gram, um, based on depends on how much you weigh is how much you're taking, and then um, for acupuncture, uh, one ten usually a visit. No. Do you do it on yourself? Yes, if I, if I need to, I do, yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> Wouldn't you, right? Because then you have to go to other, and no one else practices what I do. <laughs> yes? You got sucked. You know that. Oh, the cupping. Yeah, I don't do cupping, you know, because it the, the sanitation requirements are so laborious. You have to have, like, a separate sink and let everything sink, you know, and soak in these chemicals for a super long time, and it's just too much of sanitation. It just takes too much, too much time. But it works really well. Yeah. How do you recover from burnout? Oh, that's a good question. I Honestly, I take herbs. <laughs> yeah. It works. Uh, if I feel it, then I'll feel my pulse. I'll be like, oh, yep. Yeah. It's usually the liver that's up. Yes. How did you treat your acne with her herbs? And Diet was the main thing. I didn't actually use herbs to treat acne. Diet. No. It says acne is a strep. It's strep. So you find out what feeds strep and what kills strep. And I changed my diet that way. And there's an online question. Do you go through medical insurance? Um, I do a cost share plan because uh, I use, for me personally, I use Western medicine for emergency medicine. I use Eastern medicine for everything else. Um, so I use a cost share that's set up for emergency medical. Yeah. And then I guess what's your biggest piece of advice for any entrepreneur starting out? Well, I had them. I had them there. <laughs> your biggest yeah. piece. If you had to, if you had to uh, say one thing. Question okay. everything. Question everything. Everything. Teachers might want to close your ears, but question everything you're taught, everything you're told. Question it. Don't just accept it. Memorize it for your test and get your grade, but you know, question it. Yes. How was the, uh, the process of starting your own practice, and what did you have to go through to do it? To start your own practice, yeah. um, so you got to go to school, then you got to pass the board exam, and then you got to find a place. You got to get your business license, and then you got to set up, you know, set up your. Uh, you know, merchant services, get your rooms all ready, get, get stock everything, and then market and get full in. This guy's getting an A. <laughs> do you have a question? Yeah. Do your, do your patients have any other question like your practices about what you do? Do they question what? Your practices like hacking puncture, herbs. Do they, oh, do they question how, the, how it works? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you know what's interesting is people question alternative medicine so much more than they do Western. Western, there's like, oh, take a pill, and they don't look, hey, this could kill you. This could do, has all these side effects. We're so um, brainwashed into thinking that Western medicine is the solution to everything. So, yeah, people question our medicine all the time. Uh, but the problem is, is they're not questioning Western medicine, not questioning it at all. Yes. Do a lot of people go to your place? Do a lot of people? Yes. <laughs> yes. Do you think like, the field of like, Eastern medicine like, grow? Yes, I do. I, I do see it growing. Yeah. Especially now that we're getting some of the secrets out and that it's, you know, it's becoming, um, especially you guys want to go, you know, you're going into Western medicine, what you want, some, you don't want something that's like, a chi energy based medicine, right? You want something that's that's real and a lot of doctors understand that. If you have, you know, just about blood and oxygen flow, that makes sense. Yes. I don't know if I can ask this, but when did you make your like first ten K? <laughs> I don't even remember. <laughs> I've been in practice a long time, so I don't know those numbers. Yeah. So do you have like a like estimate how long it took or not? I, I, I really don't remember. Yeah. Not that long ago. <laughs> Yes. How long was your schooling? Uh, good question. So our school is four years. We smashed actually six years into four, but I took seven. No. And that's on top of a bachelor's degree as well. Yeah. Like after you did the acupuncture, like the herbs, do you prescribe them anything, or do you give them any more herbs after that, or you just yeah? So herbs usually, if you're under fifty. Um, six months will usually cure everything. If you're over fifty, it's usually um, you know six months to a year. Are there any schools in Florida that offer this health career? Uh, I think Florida Atlantic does. Yeah. Uh, I think they're in Fort Lauderdale. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, uh, you said you changed your diet. Yes. What kind of foods did you have to stop eating? Uh, a lot of processed foods. Processed? Yeah. Uh, fruits and vegetables were a big one to bring in. Yes. What made you want to get your 
Um, you know, it wasn't available really, and so it was kind of a new thing. And what made me want to get my doctorate is really not so much for me, but people just when you have a doctor behind their name, I immediately got a lot more respect from people, which was kind of interesting. So it was more of a societal push, and it just kind of came at a good time. Hi, there's an online question um, <laughs> that says, what injuries did you have during your swimming career, if any? Oh, gosh. <laughs> um, I've, I've had almost every injury you can imagine. You know, I've had shoulder problems, wrist, ankle problems, shin splints, um, I've had back and neck pain. I've had, I've had a, lot of, a lot of different ones. Yeah. Good question. Yes? Uh, do you have any patients that are sport-related I used to do sports medicine and acupuncture. I used to specialize in that, but I don't do it anymore because I found that the majority of my patients were um, non-athletes, and so um, I don't really I don't cater to that. So I don't get that many sports people. Yeah, but I did, and I worked. I did an internship at AccuSport, which is uh, a really well known in the acupuncture field of, of a sports medicine treatment. And there was a lot of you know that's all I treated treated was athletes. Yes. What's your most interesting thing to treat? the most interesting? I don't know off the top of my head. It's a good question. No one's ever asked me that. I, I have to come back to you. I don't I don't know. Let me give me some time to think about it. You stump me. Good job. What are the general demographics of the people that come into your office and their age, etc.? Um usually 40 and over, um, the demographics would be majority women, but some men, just because women tend to take care of their health a little bit better than men. Um, so that's so older. Yeah. Yes. Um, what were you like studying in college then before you like went into um, what was I like studying in college, or what was I studying? Oh, what was I studying? Yes. Yeah, so I didn't know what I wanted to do, and because I, I swam, I actually had to take all these tests because I had to declare my major. So um, they found they're just like take what you like. So I did psychology, sociology, and anthropology. So did that help at all with any of the, what you do now? Like, I guess maybe the psychology a little bit. Yeah, a little bit with that, but not really. I, for me, college was just kind of more of an experience of being away from your parents and just being on your own and experiencing life that way. Yeah. Is there a difference between dry needling and acupuncture? Oh, that's a good question. <clears throat> dry needling is acupuncture. It's usually done by physical therapists, and because of the laws, um, they can't say they do acupuncture, so they get around it by doing dry needling. It's usually a sports medicine style acupuncture. So when you take someone's pulse, how does that, like, what do you look for in order to diagnose them when you take their pulse? So I'll see how blood is flowing in the organs, and so I look at that, and then I'll ask them questions about their health based on what I find. Okay. When you were freshly certified, did you instantly go into starting your own practice, or did you work on somebody? Yeah, you know, you, they told us in school that, you know, there's going to be no job waiting for you when you come out. You start and you do your own, so I started my own. Yeah. First, I started renting a room out of a physical therapy office. All right, are there any more questions? Okay. Awesome. Thank you. All right, so thank you guys uh, for being here this afternoon to, to listen to Dr. Sivers. Um, and I really hope you all learned something and Honestly, it's an incredible that you are, you know, where you are today, and it's true. I can tell that you're passionate about what you do and that you bring your own experiences into your work. So thank you for sharing your story. Can we please give one more round of applause for that?